Welcome back to Beyond the Feet. My name's Josh. I'm Kez. And uh, today we're going to be having a quick look at cushion daily trainers. Most brands, top level cushion trainer that you can run a marathon in, do 5Ks in, just pick them up for your afternoon runs. We're definitely missing a couple brands, so I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments. We'll kind of keep this short and simple as far as the components go, apart from the cushioning. So a brief overview, we do have quite a few videos out on all these individually and comparing quite a few of them in a kind of duet. But yeah, you got your 1080 vs Clifton now, you got 1080 vs Triumph, 10 Triumph vs that, so on and so forth. We'll start off with the Mizuno Sky 3. This shoe here is Mizuno's go at doing a max cushion daily trainer. Has that full length wave cushioning running all the way through here. It is quite soft and responsive overall. Now this is made up of three components. So they use the X-Pop running from your heel to kind of your forefoot. And then you also got your two different densities of cushioning running all the way through the shoe. So that still makes the shoe somewhat quite stable, but it is very soft. So we're running with a 10 mil offset in this shoe. So you definitely are raised up a little bit more at the heel in comparison to some of the other shoes, but it is very soft and responsive. You'll notice this shoe to be a lot softer than a lot of the other Mizuno ranges as they have gotten rid of that wave plate they normally use. The overall fit and feel of the shoe, it locks down the foot really firmly across that midfoot area. The heel counter is really nice and cushioned. In previous iterations, they did have drama with some of the heel counter wear, but overall, this shoe's just, it works great. It's definitely one of your heavier options out of the ones we have on the table here. But if you've been a fan of Mizuno, been a fan of the Rider, um, or just other Mizuno shoes in general, and you want that kind of soft, plush cushion feel that you're missing, but you want to stick with Mizuno, I definitely say pick up the Sky, give it a go. You're looking at that $250 price point though. They also do a knit version of this shoe, which is that one piece woven knit upper. Holds the foot a little differently. Make sure you try on the shoe, see how it feels. It, yeah, overall quite soft and comfy. So we'll go on to the lightest version of probably all these shoes, so the Clifton 6. So this basically uses just one piece of cushioning running the whole way through. I think it's a compression molded EVA. Running with a 5mm drop, not a whole lot of outsole, so that takes a bit away a bit of the weight. And just a nice overall fit on the upper. It is quite deep compared to some of the others. And just very breathable, very lightweight. Does incorporate that rocker sole, so with that 5mm as well as a rocker sole, you shouldn't be heel striking it on this at all. And it just makes for that lightweight, plush, nice energized daily trainer. So very lightweight for the amount of cushioning you have. You can easily use this as a daily trainer and incorporate it into your race days. Pocket has definitely ticked quite a few boxes and they kind of stand out from the rest of these shoes just being how light they are for the amount of cushioning you have in these. Quite a stable neutral shoe as well. It's kind of that guidance neutral shoe. Coming in at 230 Australian dollars just makes for that good bang for buck. High mileage, high cushioning daily trainer. You probably expect that 700 to 800 Ks out of these. Uh, most of your wear will just be on that lateral side at the heel on your hoppers. This shoe has got great reviews from basically runners all around the world. A lot of you guys in our sub channel do love this shoe and keep raving about it. And just a quick note on that one. I know a few people are going to hit us up. What about the Bondi? We tried to do a video on that as Max Cushion in general and everyone was like, the Bondi sucks. Yeah. So <laughs> we're listening to you guys. We always liked the Bondi. We thought it was a great cushion shoe, but for whatever reason, you guys prefer on the Clifton, which is cool. We're happy to take that. Looking at your Brooks Glycerin, this shoe here definitely feels a lot firmer than the Clifton to put on the foot to start with. Running with your 10 mil offset, again, your heel's definitely a lot higher than the Clifton. The shoe itself feels really soft throughout. Initially, it will feel a lot more firm, and it's definitely a lot more energized. So you're not gonna sink into the shoe as much, but you do bounce back quite nicely. So this uses a mixture of two EVA cushionings. You've got your Biomogo and your DNA cushioning. This is kind of blended in to make that nice, responsive, soft feeling shoe overall. And again, it is quite energized. So to start with, it's not gonna feel quite as soft as some of the other options. It will feel a little more firm, but with that, it's really responsive. Probably one of your more durable out of the lot that we have on the table, except for probably the Saucony, but we'll jump into that later. Really high abrasive pads all the way through. Your rubber pretty much runs from your heel to your forefoot. 
you've got a ton of flex screws running through that four foot area. So after kind of doing 50, 60 kilometers in this shoe, it does soften up quite a bit. You've got that nice seamless upper wrapping around the foot, attached tongue, so it's gonna lock you in quite nicely. And Brooks always do a great deep heel counter. So this shoe even works quite great with any kind of inner soles or orthotics. If you feel like you need that nice cushion neutral shoe, at the same time you want that little bit more support, it will take those quite nicely. I think this is probably one of the most underrated shoes when it comes to this category. I think I started running in the Glycerin 13, probably about, I think I'd be basically five years ago. That was my first running shoe. Absolutely loved it. Uh, kind of had that, I think it was an air pocket when it came to the DNA and the heel. Can't really fault it at all. And they haven't changed too much in the last few iterations just because it is that decent, high mileage, high cushion daily trainer. So my pick of the bunch out of the whole lot of these is your New Balance 1080 V10. This is quite a lightweight shoe compared to their last iteration. This comes at 281 grams. Quite a lot of stack height, so I think this runs with a 30 to 22 mil stack height and running with that eight mil drop. They've incorporated that rocker sole to this as well and just a lot of rubber underneath the foot. So you got your endurance rubber on that heel as well as your toe off and just your air blown rubber in between. One thing I have been seeing in running with this, I'm about 150 k's into it so far. There's just a lot of wear on that uh, midfoot on that lateral side, but apart from that, this is a great shoe. Fresh foam running the whole way through, so a lot of cushioning. This is that kind of plush, and it does bounce back. New Balance have hit the nail on the head when it comes to this fresh foam. I've just been loving it. Very nice upper, so you, they got the hypo knit, so it's very elastic at that toe box, but it is very dulled in in that midfoot, so with all this kind of stitching over that midfoot, as well as a booty fit, your foot's not sliding around at all and just your ultra heel so I thought this would kind of make a few issues but this actually does lock in quite well. I do incorporate the lock lace with this. Very dialed in shoe, runs true to size. I love the hypo net that's got going on there plus just how light it is for the amount of cushioning. I can't rave anymore about this. The only kind of flaw in this shoe is just where the outsole is wearing but yeah, good shoe. You got your ASICS Nimbus 22. So this is definitely the best iteration of the Nimbus they've done so far, in my opinion. The shoe uses a flight foam running all the way through here, which does make it a lot softer in comparison to the previous model. As I said, the old one feels like a brick. If you look at the old one, things are brick. You wanna build a house? It, that's your guy. Moving on from that, it's, it's a good shoe. It's really soft, cushion, kind of once you start getting going in the shoe. Initially, again, it will feel a little bit more firm in comparison to like Clifton, your 1080, your Triumph, and as your well as your React, your Glycerin, and as well as your Sky. So. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, it will feel a lot more firm, but if you're loyal to ASICS, and you're probably gonna ask what about the Evo, what about the Cumulus, shoes like this, this is marketed as their top cushion neutral trainer. So it is supposed to be quite soft, and it is in comparison to last models, comparison for ones on the table, probably not as much. Mainly because they're using that gel wrapping around the heel. Now they did release a Nimbus that doesn't have gel. And that shoe is definitely a lot lighter, a lot softer, and a lot more energized all in all. So if ASICS could get rid of the gel, I'd probably put this kind of midway in between these shoes. But because it still has that gel, it's always gonna feel a little bit more firm. The overall fit and feel of the shoe feels awesome. Like, ASICs nail the upper almost every time. It holds the foot great. Your heel counter is always great on the ASICs. But with that gel, it does make it a lot heavier and just a lot more sluggish overall. You're not gonna get as much of a bounce back in comparison to other shoes. But I mean, you're paying 240 bucks. So you're not paying 260, 270. So it is, it's a great daily trainer. You're gonna get a bulk of Ks out of it because it's a tank. But yeah, it's not, not as soft. So moving on to probably the most durable outsole and probably the most durable shoe out of these seven. So you got your Saucony Triumph 17. So this has a power arm plus midsole, so it's a thermoplastic bead. Just doesn't harden in the cold and just doesn't soften up in the heat. So very energized, very durable, has a lot more uh, energy return, as well as just being a lot more flexible throughout the whole shoe. Uh, they do have crystallized rubber, so this thing basically can't wear out. Uh, you'd probably be looking at about that 1,000 to 1,200 k just out of what's underneath your foot. That Power Arm Plus is very durable as a cushioning system as well, and probably, I'd say, the best cushioning system out of a lot of these. And just with how the upper is dialed in, it is nice, slim runners fit. You do get a nice lockdown over the midfoot uh, with it being a booty fit. It's just made for that high cushions 
basically overall over the whole shoe. So you got your yeah, high cushion underneath your foot as well as around the whole upper. One thing you're probably a bit limiting is just the breathability of this. Um, it just has quite a lot of fine mesh. Uh, just makes that for holding the foot down a bit better, but it just doesn't imitate that breathability. But yeah, very cushioned, very durable, and I'd probably put this as the most durable pick out the whole lot. Probably one of the softest when it comes to an actual feel underneath the foot. And it does have that decent energy return as well. And last but not least, your Nike React Infinity Run. Now this shoe has been blowing up all over YouTube. We've done three videos on it already and it's been trialed and tested by Nike. Whether it was done properly is another thing, but as a high mileage cushioned daily trainer, it's a great shoe. The React cushioning works awesome underneath the foot. With that bevel they've added in, a bit more of a rocker sole underneath, it works. It's a great midsole running throughout. The upper on the other hand, it's like you bought it off Wish. Yeah, so the upper's nothing to kind of write home about. It does somewhat hold the foot all right, but if you're kind of missing that firm heel count around the back, and your upper on the forefoot can get quite sloppy. They do use that nice clutch clip wrapping around. As a neutral shoe, it does feel quite stable still, and you do have a lot of rubber running all the way through the shoe, so again, that doesn't make it as flexible as some of the other shoes, but overall, it's it's really soft. It's comfortable to run in. Anything kind of above 10K, so the shoe does start to get quite sloppy on the foot. You flying it, starts to soften up, and you can move around a fair bit in the shoe, but anything from kind of five up to 10K, it feels amazing. It feels really soft, really fast, and it is hard to kind of run slower in this shoe. I found anyway, like I can't run really fast at all. I struggle to kind of go under five minute kilometers, but in this I'll run 430s, 440s quite comfortably until I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> So yeah, um, does have that pull tag around the back. And yeah, overall a really comfortable shoe. It's definitely kind of a hype beast though. So. One thing I'd like to add about the whole cushioning system, so brands that are just using one component for the whole midsole are definitely doing it right. Your five shoes here, your Glycerin, your Infinity React, your Triumph, your 1080, and your Clifton, all just use one piece of the midsole. Both the Japanese brands, your Mizuno and Asics, do have like three or four components making up the midsole. So you got your flight foam, plus your flight foam propel and your gel and then your trussing. So there's like four components making up the midsole, which just makes for a heavier shoe. A heavier shoe, a lot more adhesive going on, just a lot of stuff going on that really doesn't need to happen in a high mileage suit. So you got your x pop which is actually a good cushioning system. The sky's a lot better as far as the midsole goes compared to ASICS. You got your Euphoric as well as your Euphoric X and your x pop So it delivers a good cushioning system, but yes, with all that adhesive going on, it does gradually end up adding a lot more weight. And there's just a lot more things that could potentially go wrong, but they don't usually. But yes, all these do have great cushioning systems. My pick of the bunch is probably your, uh, oh, definitely your top five are these. Honorable mention to the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. You guys are probably going to comment down in the section, what about the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 or the Daddy? If you want to send us out a pair, do that, but we're not going to go spend 260 bucks on a pair of shoes. It's actually a decent shoe. They seem to dial it in quite well. Different type of nick compared to the last few seasons, and the boost is quite the same. Your Triumph is a quite a similar shoe. I'd probably pick this over the Ultra Boost just because this is a running brand. Yeah, Adidas kind of have strayed towards that kind of more casual scene when it comes to that Ultra Boost, but this is very similar to that Ultra Boost, I'd pick this any day of the week compared to the Ultra Boost. In saying that, with the Ultra Boost, the Ultra Boost 20 definitely is a more of a running shoe than previous iterations. So they have somewhat come back into the way of a daily trainer. You can still quite go for those long runs and it feel quite responsive without it being ridiculously soft and just something you wanna go have a few babies in probably say where's sketches in all this well you go right probably could be in there nah. um, yeah but. once again if you want to us to review sketches send us the shoe but there's no real kind of standout from sketches that would even come close to these you'd probably uh, compare sketches to this guy here but apart from these kind of good running shoes I wouldn't be having sketches on my feet anytime soon. And if you disagree, send us a pair. Yeah. Like, do it. Send us your, uh, our details, you can send us through. We're not paying for posts, you don't. The shoe I'd probably pick out of the bunch would either be the Clifton or the... You gotta pick one, mate. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> But for me personally, having quite a high arch, I'd probably pick this one. Feels great underneath the foot. 
I do wish they dialed in the upper a little bit better, but my foot, you clipped in and you new balance and this guy just feels way too sloppy around the upper and I'm still getting that little bit of issue with this shoe as well, but it is definitely a little bit more dialed in for my foot. As I said just before, 1080 is what I'm currently running in, great shoe. If you want to buy yourself a half decent shoe, get yourself a pair of 1080 version 10s. If not that, your Triumph 17 comes in a close in second uh, with your Clifton as a third. But these are all great shoes. You do have a few standouts and just a few brands doing a bit better, but you can't really go wrong with any of these. If you are kind of loyal to one brand, most brands are doing a half decent job when it comes to that high cushioned daily trainer. And these are them. All right, that's it. Subscribe, turn on the bell, hit like, all that kind of jazz. Catch you later. See you, bye.